Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about a 3D fly-through text effect in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. I got a request for this from my man Toxic in the comments after for a follow-up on my last video. So let's jump into Fusion guys and get into it. All right guys, so here we are in Fusion ready to go. So really quick, I'm gonna bring up a 3D text node, which you're just gonna type in 3D. Text, never mind, you're just gonna type in text. Text node right there. Now, if we bring this up in by pressing one and bring it up into this left screen here, we type in our thing, I'm gonna type in Mornington, because that's where this was shot. Do all my stuff to make it nice and sexy. Get some extrusion going. Now, if I try and join this in by shift clicking and dragging into the timeline, you're gonna notice that it won't do that. Reason being is that whenever you're working with a 3D element within Fusion, you need to add a 3D render node. So we type in render in our tools panel, add the render node, shift click, joining up our text node into that one, and add another merge node. I'm gonna shift drag this over the timeline and then we can dry, drag the render node onto our merge node. And you'll see if we select our media out and press two, bring it up into the left screen, we have got our text. Now, what we look at when we look at this is you can see it's flying through, it's not really doing anything. And the effect that we want to create is flying through the text while it's 3D. And hopefully put a bit of, put a bit of spin on it. So what we need to do, just like we did in the previous tutorial, is we're gonna click our media in one, which is the original raw drone clip here that we're doing this over. We're gonna press number two, so it is the only one that's showing up here, so we don't have the final render with the text. I'm gonna go shift space at a planar tracker, and we can see we've got this down here. Now when you're using planar trackers, as default, they come with the settings that we don't really want to use here. So we are going to change a few things up in this corner. So what I want to change is from the perspective to translation, rotation, and scale. What that means is as it's tracking, it's going to see if the rotation of the object changes or the tracking field and if the scale changes. So it means if you're moving in and out of the scene or the drone's moving forward or the camera's moving forward, it's going to move the thing that you're tracking it to in proportion to that. So that's pretty much what we want to go for. So when we're tracking these guys, you always want to make sure you're using a pretty high contrast area, especially when it's tracking the Luma channel because it's going to take the data from the light in the scene to track the object to create the tracking data for you. So I'm going to draw up here on this so it shouldn't have any interference from the background and be able to see these few points and track them pretty well. I'm going to set my reference time up here, set, and then I'm going to just press track to end down here. That is a pretty decent track. So that's pretty good. That's probably all we need for this point. So now I can press create planar transform. All that's going to do is take all the data that it's collected from here and create it into a node that can actually give the information to the piece that you want to track to tell it where to move and how to move when you do connect it up. So if I drag this planar transform onto the timeline here, and I go to my media out, press two, so it shows up in the right corner. You can see that Mornington is sticking to that point up there, nice and easy. So what I always like to do when I'm doing a three year track is chuck in my good friend DVE. It's another node which is much like the transform node but with this one it manipulates the shape or the layer or the node that you're using in a 3d axis rather than a 2d axis what i mean by that is the transform node you'll be able to contract and expand make bigger and smaller whereas this one you'll be able to rotate it in a three degree plane make it bigger or smaller in terms of relative to the camera so you can move it towards or away from the camera which is the effect i'm going to use for this one so first thing i want to do while we're at our starting point is I'm going to take the Z move and I'm going to drag this up so it's a little bit more relative to the scene. I'm going to click on the keyframe there. So as we move across, it'll still be tracking. Keyframe it there as well, just so we start at the start of the track. Tracking along and as you can see, it looks like we're moving towards it at a much faster rate. Now all we've got to do is match that movement to the movement of the foreground and you should be good 
So what I want to do is go forward a fair few paces and I'm going to drag this Z move all the way down. And you can see we fly right through it. It looks like it's coming right through the camera rather than just getting bigger until it gets too big for the scene. So if we play that forward, not too bad. So as you can see guys, as we do this, it's looking a little bit better. It's flying towards the camera, matching the foreground. The only thing I'm not liking is that it's flying through this eye here. So what I want to do is grab our X pivot. I'm going to go back to here, a few frames beforehand, and I'm just going to drag that across. Now what we should see, it's going to fly right through that eye. There, beautiful. You can do the same with the Y pivot so that it's a little bit more through the middle, flying through the middle there. There you go. Now the one last thing I like to do to really add a bit of polish to this guys is because as you can see it's quite static movement using my good friend the spine tool. Now I do have a video about that one if you want to link it up here about why you use the spine tool and why it's so important to use. So all I need to do is go to my Z move. It's all I want to select at the moment. So I'm going to deselect the center path. I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to drag across, press Alt S. I'm going to grab this node here. I'm going to drag that all the way along. Now, as you can see by this ramp, that's basically how quick or how slow or how condensed the effect is going to happen. If you don't smooth these out, it's basically going to be linear. So that means it's just going to get from point A to point B in the most straightforward fashion that it can. If we play around with these, we can change the ramp up time or the speed that it actually all occurs. So if I pull this pull this little tab out, it means the speed, the effect is going to start quite slowly and then towards the end it's going to really ramp up. And I really want to drag this one down as well, just so that when it is flying through, it is nice and quick. So if we watch this now, you're going to see it's going to fly towards the camera and much like things in real life, as it gets closer to us, it's going to look like it's moving faster. So the spine tool is absolutely essential to really pull off this effect, guys. As we can see, if we go to the point where we start tracking, we've got the mornings in there, I'm going to follow it all the way through, and bang, nice and easy. Now, some people like to do a little bit of a rotation as well. So what you can do with the DVE tool, and this is what's so cool, is change the rotation on it. So we might want to reposition this a little bit. We change the Y, and then what we can do is move all the way across, point where it's going to hit us, we'll move that across as well. As you can see, it looks like it's rotating towards us. Again, our good friend the spline tool, change the Y rotation, Alt S, spin that out, drag it out, and as you can see, now we've got the Mornington sign pivoting towards us, flying through it, bang. Really, really simple guys. It's very much the same as the last tutorial we went through, but there's a few little needles and a few little things that you can play around with and really show off with the 3D text. Obviously, while you're spinning on the DVE tool, it gets you a lot more flexibility when you're using a 3D text because you actually see the depth and the shape of the text. And it's much, much easier. Only thing I'd suggest if you're doing a big sweeping movement, so if we move down further or down on the clip, you've got me like coming around this corner a little bit more. If I wanted to show that off more, I might just anchor to this corner still and use the DVE tool to really rotate the text through rather than this small movement I've got here. But that's going to take a lot of finesse and it's just one of those things that you need to play around with. I've given you all the fundamentals and everything you should need to recreate this effect yourself, guys. So I hope you enjoy it. Hope it helps. And if you guys did enjoy this tutorial and it helped you out, please give us a like subscribe and if you're using fusion or just new to it let us know what are you struggling with hopefully i can whip up a tutorial to help you out appreciate you guys spending your time with me thanks so much i'll see you in the next one cheers